Hello everyone. So I meant to do this video much earlier with uh, back in August, early August when it uh, when System76 released Core Boot 6 or what they're calling Core Boot 6 because I'm pretty sure that's not an official release of Core Boot. But anyways, they released a new version of Core Boot for their Star Labs laptops, which as you can see, I have a Star Labs right here in front of me. Um, and it has a, a neat little configurator tool so you can control you know, the TDP of the laptop, uh, what devices are on, um, the keyboard backlight and some other stuff. It's, it's pretty handy and uh, nice to see that you could do that from within the operating system. Um, so today I'm just gonna go through installing that on this laptop here and see what happens. Um, let me close out of Discord real quick. There we go. Okay. Switch to core boot. Let's see what happens. All right, so first things first, I gotta open the terminal. It wants me to check the firmware update manager version. Okay. So I got 1.5 to 11, um, client version. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're good on that. So um, this is KDE Neon. Oh, there's the kernel 5.11.27 generic. Um, and as you can see, there's KDE Neon user edition 5.22, uh, and it's based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS release. So I'm going to add the repository real quick. Add apt repository, PPA, star labs, PPA. Okay, and it says this PTA contains packages for laptops sold and supported by Star Labs, including the Star Lab Lab Lite, Star Lab Laptop, Star Laptop Pro, and Starbook. Using them on any other computer is at your own risk. Okay, let's install that. Fans kicking up a little bit there. Um, let's see. Now we got to do the update. All right, 152 packages. Oh uh, yeah, because I haven't updated this exactly. <laughs> oh well, we'll uh, not worry about that right now, unless it forces it. Yeah, it's gonna force some updates. Oh well, that shouldn't take too long. Progress, uh, it's at 100%, it's done. All right, cool. Now, let's see. BIOS lock must be disabled when switching from the standard firmware to core boot. BIOS lock is only available in later versions of the firmware, so if you don't see it, please update your firmware first. To disable BIOS lock, start with your laptop turned off. Turn, turn it on while holding the F2 key to access the BIOS settings. When the BIOS settings load, use the arrow keys to navigate to the advanced tab. Here you will see BIOS lock. Press enter to change the setting from enabled to disabled. Press F10 key to save and exit, and then press enter to confirm. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna shut this down. Now go to the advanced tab, BIOS lock, enabled, disabled, and then F10 to save and exit. Yes, okay. So that's BIOS lock is off. Now switching branch. First, check for new firmware files. FWD manager refresh dot dot four dash dash four. All right. And then candidate manager switch branch. Yes. Yes. Switch branch from default to core boot. Yes, I do. Okay, it's downloading, authenticating, and then that password once more. Okay, so it requires a reboot to complete. Restart now, yes. 
to reboot it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it looks like Core Boot successfully installed. Nice green logo instead of the blue one be from before. That's nice. I like that. All right, let's install the Core Boot configurator next and see what happens. Should have Core Boot running. It's got that nice green logo, so. Core boot is installed. Let's see. Yeah, core boot configurator. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we got the keyboard backlight timeout setting here. We can change it from 30 seconds to one minute to three minutes to five minutes to never. We got FN control reverse, which is disabled. You can enable it. In processor, there's hyper threading, which is enabled. This is a uh, dual core uh, four thread i3, by the way. This is the uh, lower end, higher end laptop that they had on, available at the time. I was originally going to go for the light, which had a four core Celeron, I believe it was. Or no, it was, yeah, it was basically a Celeron or Pentium. Um, it was four core. It was like the N5000 uh, or something like that. And that. I decided to not go for it because at the time they had huge delays and they told me if I upgraded I could um, get the uh, you know higher end batch quicker a little bit it wasn't much quicker but after, at that point I was already waiting a long time and I was like you know what what it couldn't hurt to get the higher end model anyways I, I figured the i3 with the four uh, four threads two cores would be more powerful than that n5000 chip um, and I've been really happy with it. It's perfect for web browsing and, uh, it, it does everything I need it to do. It's not, it's not going to game really. I mean, it could do like simple games like Stardew Valley, I suppose. Um, but it's not really intended for that either. It's meant to be a solid all arounder Linux laptop. It has core boot support, which I just installed core boot in front of you guys. Um, it has, um, firmware update support. So you can use the Linux, uh, vendor firmware service and just do updates to your hard, like the SSD that's in here to the uh, firmware and microcodes and all that stuff for this laptop. It's very, very nice. Um, the only thing I'm not a fan of on this laptop is the keyboard. It's kind of mushy a little bit. It's it's usable and it's not the worst I've ever felt, but I think Pine64's uh, Pinebook Pro has a better keyboard than this um, by a decent amount. Also, the other thing is to um, the the screen here has uh, you can't see it on, on the camera here but the screen has this like lighting uh, effect difference the uh, backlight has some bleed so you could see like a white discoloration of the image on the borders of this display here um, I haven't heard other people complaining about that I think it was just my unit that was was affected but because I waited so long on like discovering it, um, I'm not gonna like go after them and say, hey, fix this or whatever. I'm not even sure if they can. I asked them if there was something I could do, like maybe I could take off this panel and try and re-tighten it down myself, like maybe there were screws I could get to. But unfortunately, this whole panel here is glued in. So there's nothing you can do about that. That said, there is screws in the back of this, so you can open up it and replace parts in it. Like you could put um, a new SSD in, for example. The RAM is soldered on this model. I believe all their models have soldered RAM. Um, but you can like swap out the motherboard if you get the part from them. They, I believe they do send you parts if you need them. Um, or you could just ship it back to them. They have an excellent warranty. I actually had to use the warranty on this thing already. Um, I had the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth die for some reason. And I shipped it back to them. Didn't cost me anything. Uh, they fixed it in like two days and then had it back to me on the third day. It, it was ridiculous. Like, you know took them two days to work on it and then they sh they shipped it out on the third day and then from there DHL took over and it was like two days to get to me so it, it was blazing fast but anyway so you have some interesting features here you can enable VTD it, it's pretty standard stuff but the fact that it's in a configurator this core boot utility is pretty nice 
on the desktop instead of having to do it from the BIOS all the time. Um, I actually am really interested to see what the 20 watt, I don't know if I would do 25 because I just drained battery faster, but oh good, thank God they have a, you know, I forgot that's also another feature of this laptop. You can disable Intel management engine, which is a very nice thing. I'm glad that's not enabled because no need for that. It's just a mess. Um, I don't really need, all right, so the wireless I'm going to enable, webcam I'm going to enable, microphone I'm going to enable, clock gating. Don't know what that is, but all right. Um, I'm just going to get disabled, and we'll go to advanced boot fallback uh, debug configuration power on behavior. All right, let's just save that. Set the password. And NVRAM tool was not able to access CMOS settings. Look at the documentation for possible causes of errors. All right, that's weird. I'm not going to mess around with that right now. Uh, this video is long enough, but yeah, so I installed Core Boot. It's working on the laptop. I installed the Core Boot config tool. Not sure why the Core Boot, uh, Core Boot config tool is not working. I'll probably contact uh, Star Labs if I can't figure it out on my own, see what's happening with that, but I'm not too worried. Um, I'll ju I can just do it from the BIOS if needed. I don't really mess with that stuff, but um, so yeah, anyways, that was me installing Core Boot on the Star laptop. If if you guys in the future are interested, I can make a review of this laptop. Um, there's definitely more quirks and stuff that I've noticed over time and things, you know. Um, I ha there's some things I like about it and there's some things I don't like about it. That said, I think they're a really, it's a really good laptop overall. Um, could just use a few minor improvements. But yeah, that, anyways, uh, that's all for this video.